<laughs> so there's finally a break in the weather here in the UK. So tonight I'm going to take the rain cover off the telescope and try and add some data to my giant squid nebula. So for the first time in three weeks, hopefully I'll be imaging in the garden tonight. So, so like I said, it's been three weeks since I started the giant squid nebula and I haven't been able to get out in the garden since then. And it's one of those targets that requires a lot of time. Um, and I've seen people take 30, 40, 50, 60 hours um, worth of data on this target. Um, and unfortunately, I think if I try and do that, it could take me until the new year, the way the weather's been in the UK at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's been really frustrating that I haven't been able to, to get out in the garden. Now I know I need some more O3 on this target. I've captured 12 hours and I showed you that in a video which I posted previously. Um, and lots of people said they was looking good, but to try and collect some more. So that's what I'm planning to do, um, but I'm not gonna try that tonight because it's been so long since uh, we've had a break in the weather that we now have a full moon. So um, yeah, so I've got the moon to, to, uh, to counteract tonight and to work around. So instead of going after the O3, I'm gonna go after the HA data um, because that filter just deals with the moonlight much better. So there's not much of a break in the weather tonight. It's, uh, it's 8.30 now and it's still completely covered in clouds. But by 10 o'clock, there's hopefully going to be about an hour to maybe three, if I'm really lucky. Some of the forecasts say three. Um, three hours worth of, of clear skies. Now, normally I wouldn't set up for such a short break in the weather because it's, uh, it's a bit of a job to bring the telescope out and set up and uh, polar align and everything. But because I haven't been out for so long, I thought I'd give it a go. So hopefully that break lasts for three hours, maybe more if I'm really lucky. Um, but yeah, it'll be nice to start to, to collect some HA and see, uh, see what that data looks like. So I'll show you how I'll get on and uh, I'll bring you back out when the uh, the clouds clear. The clouds have finally cleared and that first sub-exposure is just about to pop up on my iPad now. So I'll put that up on the screen for you to see. And there it is. So I'm quite happy with that. I think it looks, um, it looks quite good. There's a bit of detail there in the flying bat nebula. Nothing in the giant squid, as I would expect. That is very much O3 dominant. So this was, as I said before, a HA sub. It's seven minute exposure. The gain was set to 100 and the camera was cooled to minus 20 degrees. So I think that that's uh, looking okay. I think I can pull some detail out of that when I have um, a few more hours worth of data. So what I'm going to do now is just let the camera run overnight, see how much HA I can capture and then see whether I've got enough data for a final image. Okay, so I managed to capture about nine and a half hours worth of HA data on the flying bat nebula. And I think it looks quite good. Um, lots of detail in there and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I don't know whether I have enough data, especially the O3 data to finish this image. Um, I know that this the, the squid especially is very dependent on that O3, but I thought I would try and put together an image anyway. So this is my O3. Um, about 12 hours worth, and this is my HA, about nine and a half hours worth of data. Now I was playing around and combining them in the HOO palette, and this, if I just use the LRGB combination where I put the HA to the red, the O3 to the green, and to the blue channel, this is what I ended up with. So I wasn't overly happy with this. Um, 
this is no editing this is just um the straight combination and i just thought it the the o3's there but lots of the detail that i had in the ha was just kind of missing um so i wasn't very happy with that so instead i played around with pixel math um and i assigned the ha to the red channel the o3 to the blue and to the green i did a combination so i did um 0.6 worth of the o3 and then 0.4 worth of the, the hydrogen alpha. So I combine both of the hydrogen alpha and the O3 to the, uh, the, the, the green channel. And I think when I got that, it looked a lot better. So the details of the, um, the squid nebula is still in there, but it brought out a lot more of that HA detail in that flying bat nebula, which I was really pleased with. Um, so I went through um, <laughs> a little bit of... Uh, of processing. Um, I, again, I don't think this fin image is finished, but I did a background neutralization, color calibration, range range selection to get a, a range mask. Um, and then I played around with some blue masks. Um, so this is just a mask to bring out the detail in the squid itself. So I had to tidy it up using the clone stamp tool. Um, and then this is the red mask, which is the, the bat. Uh, the flying bat nebula um so I played around with that and this is my final image so thank you guys very much for watching please let me know if you've got any comments below let me know if you've got any tips on hoo processing and i will see you in the next video next friday thanks for watching <laughs>